Hey guys, what is up? Welcome to my channel. So I think today is going to be a relatively quick and easy first impressions on the new Huda Beauty Glowish line that just launch. I asked you guys on my Instagram if you guys were even still interested in it and large majority of you guys were like just post it. So here I am. I mean I love doing reviews anyway so I am happy to post a review whether or not it is new. I ordered this from Sephora. I didn't get expedited shipping or anything so lots of amazing reviews are already up if you're looking for some more content on these. But first if you're new here, hi my name is Morgan. I'm a product knowledge enthusiast. I just love knowing anything and everything about all of the new makeup on the market and sharing my thoughts with you guys and Huda Beauty is a very popular brand on my channel so I did want to cover this for you guys so I picked up the two new products that launched so I don't know <laughs> This is not a new brand, but it's like a new line from Huda, kind of similar to the ABH Norvina line. <clears throat> so it's just like a different section of the brand. They came out with the Glowish Multi Dew Vegan Skin Tint Foundation. Tints are very in the, for this time of year, and I'm really excited because this is the first time in a while where my skin has not gone crazy, so I feel like I don't need extra coverage. I picked up my skin the other day, and I am currently facing the consequences, though. I will admit that. But this, I haven't had this many breakouts in months. I did it to myself. I I'd had a good picking session and I regret it. But anyways, I've been really into skin tints because this is the first time in years that my skin has been so clear. And then they also launched the Glowish Soft Radiance Bronzing Powder. So we'll start off with the tint foundation first. This comes in 12 colors. Pretty good for a skin tint, I must say. I don't know about the range. I'm not a range expert, but 12 shades is a lot. This is $37. So, you know, it's not a super cheap foundation by any means. You know, this is fragrance-free, light coverage, skin tint, liquid formula, radiant finish, vegan, blah, 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 light and radiant. So, yeah. <laughs> so, I picked up the shade number four, light medium. I'm thinking this is too dark for me. I probably should have gotten light. I don't know. I did not watch any reviews prior to this, so I wasn't sure if this would be my shade or not. But I do want to show you the texture, and I have a few other other of my favorite skin tints that I'm gonna compare the colors to. Before I do that though, I'm just gonna prep my skin quickly with some hydration. I'm using some of the Fourth Ray Oat Face Milk. This is just a really great hydration before makeup. And I just wanna use something lightweight, something that's not going to affect really how the skin tint is going to look. So it's more so just prepping the texture of my skin. So the packaging, it comes in just a simple white tube clear outside. This is made in Italy with a 12 month shelf life. So let's take a look at the consistency of this. It's thicker. It's not dripping down my skin. I find that typically I prefer foundations that actually drip down. The more liquidy, the more I feel it looks more natural on the skin, but that's fine. Let me show you it blended out. Sorry guys, we're not doing a super professional <laughs> review today. So that's the light medium 04. I'm gonna give this one a good shake. So I'm going to show you what the color looks like next to the Laura Mercier Tinted Moisturizer in 3 and 1 Sand. These are actually relatively close in shade. The Laura Mercier is a little bit more pink. Laura Mercier is more warm, actually. The Laura Mercier definitely felt more liquidy and like it's going to be more of a tint. Now we'll do my current favorite skin tint that I've been loving. This is the Milk Makeup Skin Tint in Sand. Now this is the older one. I know it's been reformulated. Uh, so this is the pre-formulation. You can see this shade is a lot lighter and this is a really good shade on my skin. So, okay. And this one also looks a lot less thick. And we will do the Pretty Fresh Hyaluronic Acid Tinted Moisturizer from ColourPop in the shade Medium and 9W, which is too dark for me as well. Now this one has a similar consistency, I would say, to the Huda. And they're similar colors. This one pulls a little bit more neutral and it feels a little bit more thick than the ColourPop, but I would say consistency wise, these are the closest. Do you guys see my watch tan? That white stripe on my arm. Oh my goodness. But yep, those are the comparisons. Wow, that Laura Mercier shade was looking. I feel like it's oxidized and old or something because I feel like that's not the color I ordered. I think it needs a good shaking up or something. Let's apply this to the skin now. Now, I actually, I hate applying makeup with my fingers, but I find skin tints and tinted moisturizers, it just looks so amazing with the fingers. So I'm going to try that on half of my face. I'm going to do like a half pump. So you can see 
too dark on me, but I'm not going to fret about it because you can see my forehead is tanned right now because I wear a mask at work <laughs> and it's a good match for my forehead. I'm going on vacation in a month, so I'm pretty sure this will end up being my color. So I'm not too worried about that shade match, but right now it's a no. Wow, you can see that is very, very glowy. This is just a light wet layer. I'm going to do just a little bit more like right here. Definitely even the skin out, but it's not giving too much coverage, which is what it claims. So that's not a bad thing. That is how that's looking. I'm going to try it with a sponge on the other side just because sponges are normally how I prefer to apply my foundations. Obviously, this isn't a foundation. This is giving your girl a tan. I'm looking a little dirty. I just spread out a little bit on my hand to see if maybe it oxidizes. But wow, that's a perfect match for my forehead. But typically everybody's forehead is darker than the rest of their face. So you can see I have, oh my goodness, a really nasty annoying friend that's been getting on my nerves today. I put a little bit of extra coverage right in this area. Yeah, so if you're my skin tone, I mean, I got the fourth shades and I thought that would work. I'm normally a light medium skin tone, but too dark on me. Light might be the best shade number three because I'm looking oh my god <laughs> I look orange and very very shiny I don't know if you can see but the uh, glow here is interesting. This reminds me a lot of the Charlotte Tilbury Hollywood Flawless Filter. If I were to apply this all over the face. Let me put some down my neck. I almost feel like for me to like this, I need to put a foundation over top. Because this is actually kind of way too sweaty looking for me personally. But we're going to do concealer, eyebrows, maybe a little bit of powder. We'll see how that looks afterwards. But here's what one and a half-ish layers look like it definitely evened out my skin tone didn't add much coverage it didn't claim to though and gave me a very dewy dewy glow so i don't know if you have oily skin if this is a product that would be for you okay i'm gonna do my eyebrows and then i'll be back to show you what other products i'm putting on my face just so you can see how they would react <laughs> show you the box that it came in by the way it's just a very simple white box and so okay i used a really lightweight concealer i bought the fenty concealer in number six melon again it's quite light for me i don't i don't know i give up but it's better for me than the first shade that i bought which was way 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 too light for me and i'm actually happy that i used this for today because it lightened up how dark <laughs> the Huda product was. And I definitely needed some powder because I was way too shiny. I looked like the Tin Man. Okay, light is changing. Let me change the light, have to adjust. Um, anyways, I really needed to use powder because I was looking like the Tin Man. So I used the Charlotte Tilbury Translucent Powder in the T-zone area. So you can see the outsides of my face are very, very dewy. I mean, you definitely are going to need to like dewiness to enjoy this product. So we're gonna move on now to what I was most excited for. This is the Glowing soft radiance bronzing powder so there are five shades in the launch I got shade number two medium and I think it's gonna be a good shade so the packaging itself just the simple white box and here is what the packaging of the product looks like I really love this so this is made in Italy it has an 18 month shelf life it is all plastic which makes it feel less luxe it's a $31 product though so it's not a super luxury price but how beautiful does that this look this would have been a beautiful cream product Product. But I love their cream contour already, so I know why this is powder, but I love this packaging. $31, I mean, that's not bad. Now, this is a transfer-proof, non-drying powder bronzer with a velvety finish to give you a natural-looking tan with subtle luminosity. So there's some skincare ingredients here from what I can see. Satin finish is the name of the game for this one. I look like I have bronzer on right now <laughs> already from the 
product. Oh what my goodness, the sun went away again. Filming at like five-ish is always a struggle. Okay, anyways, this is a powder. Let's take a look. It feels a little bit creamy. It's not the creamiest thing I've ever felt. Uh, there's a little bit of drag on the skin, but that's what the color looks like. So this looks like it's gonna be good for me. I can see that satin finish on the hand. Looks pretty warm in person from what I can see. I'm gonna use an Esam V49 brush to apply this. Mm. So I'm happy that I got this color because I feel like the light shade wouldn't have been dark enough for me. Very interesting because their foundation runs very, very deep. But this is quite warm and it's applying seamlessly on the skin, though I don't really feel like this brush is picking up enough color. So I like to typically use a softer brush, something a little bit less dense. But we're going to try the Refer Number no. 5 brush. This one is a touch more dense than the Isam and it's natural hair, so it tends to pick up powder products better. So that's better. That's kind of, I prefer this brush. A natural hair brush works better with this product and this gives such a pretty warmth to the skin. Wow, I really like this bronzer and it's not as dewy <laughs> as the foundation. So it's toning down that dewiness and it's very complementary to that. So here's a better look at the color from what you can see. So with that little bit of powder that I use and then the bronzer, the base, honestly, it looks really nice now, very natural. Still very, very glowy, but it looks really lightweight. So I'm gonna finish my eyes. I'm just gonna throw something easy on, I think, and lips, and I will be back to kind of tell you how I'm feeling so far. So I just did a super simple, natural makeup look, and uh, I mean, I haven't worn this yet, but I, ju I just don't think this is the product for me. I like a dewy skin tint, but this is taking it to a whole extra level. <laughs> <laughs> for me. As you can see, I went very, very simple with my makeup today. I just fresh summer makeup I thought would be a good fit. And I did powder my face and you can see like I feel like I'm already dewy again within like 20 minutes. I almost feel like this should not have been advertised as a skin tint. I, it should have been like a highlighter. <laughs> it reminds me a lot of like the Charlotte Tilbury highlighter as far as how it looks on the skin. I think for me to really appreciate this product, I would prefer to use it underneath foundation or mix it in with foundation. I think that would be really beautiful. But as far as slapping it on my face, that would absolutely not work for me. It just looks way too shiny. Now that I have concealer and I used a powder blush, powder bronzer, powder in the T-zone, it looks much, much better. Like I can get away with using this as a foundation, but it's a skin tint. And for me, when I go for skin tints, I'm typically going for very light, easy, quick makeup. And you can't do that with this. It's just too much glow. I need to tone it down. So far, not for me in this way. I will continue to play with this in other ways like mixing it in or using it as a base color. I will keep you updated in a short wear test, but the bronzing powder, now I really like this. Now I don't know if I prefer this over my normal bronzer because I do find the product kind of difficult to pick up. You have to be a little bit picky with how you apply it, but the look on the skin is very cream-like and very hydrating. It has a seamless blend into the skin, which which is very similar to that of using a cream bronzer. So it almost looks kind of blurring as well. So I think it looks beautiful on the skin, not my favorite application, but I really like this. Not sure about this. So I'm filming this pretty late in the evening at five o'clock. I'm gonna keep you guys updated. I don't think I need an eight hour wear test to really tell you how I feel about this, but I'm gonna wear it for longer just to let you guys know. All right guys. <laughs> I'm just going to do a one check-in today because it's getting late. I have to wake up at 6 in the morning tomorrow for a wedding. It's like 9 o'clock and no, it's not even. It's 8 o'clock. I've only worn this foundation for like three and a half hours. Do you see how oily I am? Now, I'm a little bit extra oilier than I would be because I have a light right in front of me for the sweat and oils to bounce off of, but I look pretty shiny in real life as well. And this is literally three and a half hours, you guys. I cannot imagine somebody with oily skin enjoying this product, even me with dry skin. I do not, do not enjoy it on its own. That being said, I'm not writing this product off because I actually feel like this is a great 
great addition to my summer routine. I can actually see myself mixing this with a lot of foundations, particularly the ones that are a bit light on me and a bit matte, something that's a little bit more winter. This is a good way to turn it into a more summer foundation. So I feel like I like this. I don't like this as a skin tint on its own. Definitely no go. But it does have a very pretty glow to it and I think I could utilize that as a primer or mixing it in and I will definitely keep you guys updated on that in a future video if I end up liking it that way but as a skin tint itself the way that they market it it's a no for me. Now the soft radiance bronzing powder I really feel like does everything it claims. I think it's really nice. I wish it gave a little bit more off on the brush because I did have to build it up but if you're very fair you actually might like that but as far as how it looks on the skin once you've packed enough of it on it does give that soft radiance to the skin it looks very seamless I mean it's one of the most seamless powder bronzers I've ever seen as far as the way that it blends into the skin so I'm a fan of this it's not the greatest product in the world I'm excited to continue using this so there we have it that that was my first impressions on two of the new items from the Huda Beauty Glow Wish launch. Yeah, I mean, a little bit disappointed in some ways, but also excited in other ways. So I hope you guys enjoyed this video. Thank you so much for watching. If you aren't subscribed to my channel already, I would love it if you would consider taking the time to do so. And I will see you all in the next one. Bye guys, have a good one.